How you doing? Had a really good day. We got uh, two more saws. Yep, two. Got to add them wind chisels. 272. Yeah, it says 268 there, but it's a 272. I swap covers with him. I give him a good cover. You have to get yourself a little uh, a new emblem right here, buddy, when you get your saw. Uh, this is a nice running saw. Yeah, got stickers on it already. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother to start this. It runs good. It runs really good. It jumps all over the bench. I got parts on this bench. Maybe we'll start it toward the end of this video or something. Um, as you know, Daryl Burgess is getting my original 66 mag. Well, he sent me this muffler quite a while ago. This is for a 361 steel. And uh, I want to get that saw sent out with this muffler. So I think first of the week we're going to be set up and building a few mufflers. So expect that as long as I got that uh, that junker dog uh, straightened out where I want it for running it this weekend. And I also have to have this uh, Blue Thunder running. If that's running, then we're going to do mufflers. Otherwise, we're going to work on that till it's done. Uh, I worked on it a while today. That's one I'm getting sick of working on. When I lose the mood, i got to stop. But it's getting there. And I know it's going to be a good saw. But I won't let it leave till it does. But it's we got it now. I, I know we do. There's no question. Okay. The 361... We're going to do something for you, Daryl. I'll tell you what we're doing. We got this pipe here. This is three-quarter OD, which, and it's eighth-inch wall, so that makes it five-eighths ID. What we're going to do is cut a piece of that two and a half inches, put about three-quarters of an inch through there. Maybe we'll make it one and a half. I think that's what I'll do. I'll make it one and a half. We're going to, right here in this corner, so that it comes over that chain side cover. Uh, we happen to have Adam Daly's 361 here, which I've had for since Christmas. A local guy, nice guy, you'd love to meet him. We're going to get him on video. Um, so I know that I got room to do that where I want. But the trick to this is it won't take a bigger than 5 eighths. 5 eighths is all I want to do. Uh, I got to remove this put a plate over that hole and one thing or another and make a proper muffler. Uh, what's nice, it doesn't have uh, a, a baffle on the inside right in here. The, they, they put the baffle right up here on the top. Uh, actually, it's uh, right in here. So I'm going to get away with this beautifully. I'm going to take advantage of where that baffle is. And we're going to see if we can get him a little more horsepower and uh, a cleaner burn and nicer running saw. Uh, I, I fully expect we can. Uh, this was a nice build. I'll tell you what I did. You're gonna, this is something you guys need to know. Let me, let me dig around and find something. I've been working on saws. Two stroke anything. For longer than I care to tell. And once in a blue moon, something will crop up that will give you a puzzle. And I'm going to share something that happened to me that stopped me right in my tracks. Got a new ignition switch in this. When I got saw running, I was like, dang, that ignition switch don't work. So I put a new one in it. I ordered one. I put a new one in it. And, uh... That one didn't work either. It worked once. Well, okay, so you, you get a bad one. Now, these are OEM. I'm not buying aftermarket. These are OEM. But I'll tell you what I ran into. Uh, this switch came in the mail uh, the other day. I decided that I better get this in, get this saw finished up, and that's that. Switch didn't work. Wouldn't Kill switch would not work. Oh, no, 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 no. It, two OEM ones in a row. At least the first one, it did once shut it off. So I started digging. I wanted to see what was what. This is the wire that was in it. Now this really got me. That's the coil side. 
ignition side. Okay, they just plug in. I screwed around and screwed around. And I decided I'm going to take this wire off and inspect that and see what the heck's going on. Now, I'm going to get this in some needle nose so you can see. See that little bugger? That was broke. Right inside that heat shrink. Yes, it was. Wasn't touching nothing. I pulled that off. And it came off too easy. I said, oh, ho, 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 I know what that is. So uh, I uh, put a new wire in it. Guess what? Ignition switch works. All because of a spade connector. A darn spade connector. This saw has been stalled three weeks because of a spade connector. Amazing, isn't it? Well, guess what? That means I got the original switch that was in it. It's probably good. Plus the other new one, which is laying right here, and I just lost it. I better find it quick so I can put it in the box so I know where it is. Okay. Now, you know, as builders, we have ways of not being bored, okay? Now, I got to admit, Junkyard Dog runs pretty good. It's time to go to another level, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Some of you already know this. Here is a 52 millimeter big bore for a 372. This little thing here is a reed cage. This is where a reed cage goes. I had cut that intake right off. And I put this on. Yeah, I used AB Weld and it works good there. There's some places it doesn't work good, but some places it does. But I'll guarantee you one thing right now. I am getting air through that. I will promise you, when we get done cutting and gutting on these transfers to take advantage of that, now did you notice that, that question chamber, and that's just factory, right? Um, you might want to run a little alcohol on this. But I want to take advantage of these reeds. Here's that reed cage. What do you think of that? Yeah, dirt bike stuff in it. That little sucker drops right in there, just like that. Here's the little intake. Goes on there just like that. All I got to do is cut my factory rubber intake to the right dimension. My carburetor is going to mount exactly in the proper spot that factory intended, so I won't have air cleaner issues or anything. Okay, so this is kind of next level stuff. It's not things you can't figure out on your own, because you can, because you guys are pretty sharp. That's why that, I, I, I watch some comments. Mm -hmm. I talked to some of you guys on the phone. You're, uh, you're intelligent as heck. You're here because I, uh, I throw something at you once in a while. It gives you a curve. Okay, I'm going to give you one. See this head? Okay. We're going to go to a center plug. On this cylinder, I build a piston with a window to use with this reed cage. You kind of take the timing out of your uh, intake, let the reed be your timing. Okay, that's what makes these uh, little suckers tick. Okay, now if you look, oh, that's so shiny, I've never. I've got a witness mark here. Right there. You see that? Boy, I tell you what. That's about where they we're going to cut that to. See how much we're taking off to get the combustion chamber to the size that I want. I'll reshape it very similar to this. You know, this right here has got to be a uh, machine just like this one is. I'll blend that just a little better. And I think what we're going to do is get a hold of Dave at Chainsaw Conservation Components, and we're going to get a coated Wisco flat top for this. Something nice and light. We'll throw our window in that. And I've already CC'd that, so I know where I want that to go. I, I know how much I want to cut. Okay, okay, Harv, you got that figured out. This stuff's been done. 
but that's nothing new. Just not on chainsaws. I'm cutting this head off. I know what you're going to say. Why don't you just chuck it in your lathe and use the parting tool? You know what? When you chuck these cylinders in a lathe, you can machine your bases and you can machine uh, where you want to. But, boy, if you use a part tool and that grabs just a whisker once, that's going to make a wreck. So what we're going to do is use alternative means. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I'm going to get out my dang old hacksaw. I'm going to whack that off and give myself about 60 thousandths the machine. Then we'll chuck this up and we'll kiss it. We'll get it right where we want it. We'll get this where I want it. I am going to build studs that goes right down through these holes. that will mount. Okay. It'll come right up through them. Now imagine with no head. Two of these actually line up. Two don't. I've got to, I've got to uh, rebore two holes right here, and then we'll be good to go. Um, this isn't hard. I think maybe I'll, uh, if I got a few minutes Sunday, might get this head done. Get this. Uh, if I get to it this weekend, I like doing stuff like that on my own time. Uh, I try to do you guys' stuff during the week, but once in a while, you know, it's like today. Oh, it's three o'clock. I uh, my I started out here kind of early, and I, you get you get a little bit fatigued. So you you coast at the end of your day. That's what you do. And uh, I'm getting things done soon. Okay, but I'm really excited about this because if I get that Weisco coated piston in there with this head. At the CCs that I've got to spec for, we're going to have Blaze of Glory compression. We're going to have that where I want it. I'm not giving numbers at this point because we have to, theoretically, the math works out. That's all it is. It's just not a big deal to CC these and figure out where the math is. I'm going to take advantage of that small plug. Uh, some dirt bikes run that little tiny plug, spark plug. I'm going to take advantage of that. I know what that does. And having that in the center, I would really like that in the center because that's going to allow me to do something crazy with the uh, transfers with a center plug, which I may I may share that. We'll just see. We'll just see. But uh, I'm going to do a couple more things with these transfers that I normally wouldn't do because we build logging saws, and we want tried and true, dependable logging saws. But we want them with a little bit of, you know, a crack to them, you know. But this one is, yeah, it's just, just call it next level. It's just next level stuff is all it is. And uh, this little head is going to do what I want. It really is. It's going to be interesting. The only thing I'm not positive is, is am I going to have to grind a machine on the size to get that fit? I know one thing that's going to happen. I probably will have to use the decompressor, but I might have problem with that. That decompressor might not be uh, a fully operational. Let's put it this way: when I old Dave, it's over in the corner there. That's uh, I did a lot of neat stuff to that. And when you you can push the decomp on that, I deliberately put a cylinder on it with a decomp, you know, from a 660. But it's a big bore. 100 cc. It's 99 cc. 99 point something. Uh, it, the minute that a piston comes up without even firing, it pops a decomp. You can't. It's just a bugger. So, what I might do, I might have to, is make a decomp. And if I do, what I'll do is I'll just have it cam over and open. You know, it'll, it'll pull up. It'll be a little lever to pull up. And stay open. Because if it's got enough compression to pop that, I'm going to hold that open. That means it'll have enough compression run with the decomp open. And then when you shut it, it, uh, it it'll go ahead and seal right up and 
and away we go. But this is something I'd like to get done fairly quick. I want this, uh, uh, we're going to put it on Junkyard Dog. I mean, it's just, it's got to happen. That's what that saw is for, right? Uh, we got an amazing piston cylinder on it. It runs beautiful. It, uh, and that's a white skull from CCC. It runs beautiful. But this is uh, something that I have to do. Um, I want to do. And we're going to do it very, very, very quick. I'll put her at it on the weekend. Let's just see what happens. Um, I, you've seen me port these a hundred times. If you did it once. I have gave you the numbers. I've told you everything I do. Now we're going to control the intake with a reed. I don't think anybody's done that with a 372, have they? No, they haven't. What if you did it to a bigger saw? Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Okay, I'm gonna. I'm doing actually pretty good on this video, so I'll tell you what we're doing next. Is I got all these little bags of gaskets and parts and stuff. Uh, I could run that piston I built right there. I could run that, but I think I want. I want to put this together just once. That's what I think I want to do. So, let me get my parts back together where everything goes. Yeah, that's a, you guys, I know, it's a 272 piston, but they're 52 millimeter, but that lets you machine a, a fairly good dome. This had a pop-up. It was a pop-up for a uh, 272, but that, yeah, that lets you get a pretty good dome. Uh... You guys don't miss nothing. I deliberately, it, it depends on my mood, I'll deliberately do something just to see if you guys catch it. Uh, I, well, my gum was on fire yesterday. I said, you know, I'm just going to just see who mentions it. But you guys picked up on it. The one that was funny yesterday is you guys caught something that I didn't catch till I was done with the video. There was a bolt missing in that, in that muffler for Zach saw. That was hilarious. You guys caught that before I did. I love you guys for that, man. I really do. It, uh, but yeah, this is uh, this has been an ongoing project with this reed saw. Uh, we we got we're gonna build a centrifugal uh, supercharger in one of these. I don't want to do that with I already have high compression, but. We're going to do that inside the motor. But uh, this saw uh, kind of, I'm going to go ahead and start it. It's not its not easy to start. Uh, somebody went just a little bit wonky with the compression. I don't know who did that. But uh, they, that happens. That happens. Let's just see what it does. Uh, like I said, you got to, I'm used to drop starting these, but with no bar and chain on it, it really works hard. Switch works. I love it. I really do. But you know what I did, <laughs> fellas? This is funny. I uh, I always have bar nuts everywhere. I mean, they're on the floor. They're in the shelves. They're where they're supposed to be in a box. Everything. You know what I can't find right now? I walk out here in the morning. I'll find. I need a pair of bar nuts for this. I can take one off one of these saws up here to run it. We will be running this here uh, right pronto so we can get it mailed out. And I want to get Daryl's uh, 66 mailed out with his muffler. I want to get that 66, uh, that Blue Thunder. I want to get that mailed out as soon as we run it. I'd like to say I could have that done by weekend, but we're going to see. Uh, I got one more little saw that's been bugging me. That I got to take care of, which I will. Uh, for a local guy, it's just a, one of the little fixer-upper things. Yeah, I take care of people that take care of me. That's what I do. Even you guys. 
And I, I really appreciate all you do. I really do. I think we should do a live stream soon, huh? We're set up. We've been set up to do live streams. Uh, I think we should do one soon. If I do, I'll let you know a couple days ahead of time uh, when we're going to do it. I'm not sure what day. Uh, but I think we'll do it. We'll do it. But it, uh, Dan Caminetti. He's from Connecticut. Nice guy. I've had his saw a while. Really beautiful. 372. Probably in another week, we're going to go ahead and assemble his saw. Uh, that one is going to be really cool. That's an X Torque that we converted to the original XP. That's what we did. As long as I can find the carburetor I want to use on that one. I didn't want to use the X Torque carb unless I got to. Sometimes they work good on them, sometimes they don't. I, I don't know what the deal is, but that is what it is. But Dan spoke up and he told me, he says, Harvey, whatever saw that you want to send me, I'll buy. And he definitely wants a 394. Dan, you're getting a 394. I happen to have a couple of them here. Uh, I think we're going to build one and send to Buck and Billy. So there goes one. I'll have one for myself. And well, Dan will have one. So that'll be three of them. I think one of them we ought to do real wild, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should. I might build one for me first. Just to make sure I want that wild. But uh, I know what makes them things tick. I mean, you just throw the love at them. Just throw the love at them. This is a nice running little saw. Uh, Daryl Burgesses run like this. They run really nice. It truly did. We are going to build one of these for Eric Nelson. Don't tell him, okay? Let's keep it a secret. Got that build coming up quick. As soon as the piston gets here, I got everything to do about him, man. We're going to do all brand new. Uh, Eric's a good logger, good friend, and he don't have one of them yet, so he's going to get one. Maybe we won't mail it to him. We'll wait till he's going to be here in May, May 14th, I think. Somewhere in there, middle of May. Uh, Colin's birthday is the 15th of May. And I think we're going to have a few people here. Uh, Daryl Burgess, Lane Burgess, they're coming. Hopefully their brother Warren comes. It, uh, I'll track him down. I will. I'll track him down. We'll get him here. I'm so happy spring's here. I really am. You know, when we as kids... We loved winter. We watched winter come in. Oh, goodness sakes. That was back when you could depend on, sometimes for Halloween you got snow, but it didn't stay around. It was about the first week in November. Hey, you got enough snow to go right downhill. Uh, it's really not that way now. It's like everything shifted a month. Uh, we used to have earlier springs and winter come in earlier. Now it's just that way. It, uh, just, it's just what it is. Well, I'll tell you what. I remember spring. I remember a lot of times in uh, uh, Easter time. We always have family get-togethers at my grandmother's house. And uh, all the cousins and nieces and aunt, aunts and nephews and one thing and the other uh, all were here. And the adults would play croquet. Do you ever play that? Yeah, that was a little bit too slow paced for me too when I was a little kid. We was running and screaming. That's what we was doing to get a bunch of us together, and and we do that Easter. That uh, be that nice. It isn't quite like that now, is it? It's cold and rainy. Uh it is what it is. Now my grandmother had a nice big old apple tree up back. She had a dog. Uh he was uh, not a great big dog, medium-sized dog named Snuffy. My brother, he'll remember him. Uh, oh, I thought he was the nicest dog in the whole darn world. Well, way before my time, uh, I'm not sure what happened, but something happened where he didn't like kids, especially little boys. And that dog would bait you. 
Yeah, I remember Grandma fed him gravy train. In the winter, he got a little hot water on it, you know, it had a dog coop there full of straw, and right under that apple tree. Well, he was on a fairly long chain, but you could tell in the circle on the apple tree where that dog ran. Well, I seen his dish was kicked over where he couldn't get it. It was over on uh, the grass, and this was this was one of them uh, right about Easter time things, and uh, the buds the trees are getting leaves, and uh, you know you you see all the brand new. This is what's nice about having four complete seasons, like we do here in the Northeast. Yeah, I've been down south. It's like hot, hotter. Two weeks of dang, it's forty degrees. I'm freezing, and you're cold, and right back to hot, and then hotter. So that's not four seasons. So I kicked that dog dish over. Well, the darn thing didn't want to go where I wanted. So what I did, I picked that dog dish up and I set it down. That dog wouldn't come near that. Now, that's what a dumb seven-year-old does. Oh, what a nice dog. He looks hungry. I'm going to carry this great big dog dish right over and put it beside his coop so he could have his food. And I set that dog dish down. I didn't even get it down. And uh, uh, that dog bit me right here. I mean, he grabbed my arm, and he met it. And he started shaking me. And I started screaming because I didn't like that. You know, you're a little kid. I didn't cry much. I never did that much. But uh, I started screaming. And I tried to run. He grabbed my pants, and he ripped a great big hole in my shorts. I had blue jean shorts on. Great big hole in that. That was awful, and he took one of my socks and tore the top of it right off. And I only had to run about 30 feet. That's all I had to run. I couldn't do it fast enough. So, way I go running and screaming around the house, my grandmother comes out, Harvey Paul, what have you done to that dog? I was like, hey, buddy, that dog, I, you know, he bit me. Quit teasing him. You know, isn't that something? When you're a little kid and trying to do a good deed, that backfires, don't it? Yeah, that one did. And, uh, my, boy, she took one look at me and says, Well, you're bleeding here. Let's clean it up. And, boy, your mom's going to kill you when she sees them shorts. And what happened to your sock? Don't tell me that dog did all that. No, he did. He did. No, no. I, I, I can imagine he'd just give you a little nip or something when you, uh, Got too close to him. Why'd you do that? I was trying to give him his dog dish. He didn't need his dog dish. I said, but Grandma, it was, I don't care. I don't want to hear it. You shouldn't be messing with that darn dog. You know he'll bite you. And boy, is she ever right. You know, isn't it funny? They underestimate you when you're seven years old. People do. So you got a six, seven, eight-year-old boy, girl around. You think you know what level they're, oh, they're way ahead of you. Way, way, way ahead of you. You just don't know it. You have to collect yourself and remember when you was seven. That's what you have to do. I ain't never going to forget when I was seven. And, uh, but yeah, that, uh, yeah, mom did. She, she blistered my butt when she seen that. Uh, she thought I did it riding my bike or something. And then she thought maybe I caught my sock in the chain or something or or I was getting too rough or rough or something, and uh, we were a rough bunch around here. We were just old country kids, you know. And uh, it didn't seem like when you're young you ever really got hurt too bad. You could have terrible things happen. Bounce right back. Ten minutes later, you're going the other direction, didn't you? You remember all that? Wait till you're sixty. If you haven't made it there already, wait till you're sixty. Yep. Two days ago, right over here in the big bay. I decided that's, that needs cleaning out. Uh, it really does. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. I was carrying a box of parts back over because I brought it over here to get some screws. And uh, I tripped over a pile of leaf springs and an air hose at the same time. I went down. I was carrying a box. I went down all. And it wasn't slow motion like normal. Hell, I went down hard. Man, I landed on that box. Boy, I'll tell you what, that was kind of like an airbag for an old man. Uh, that saved me. That that really hurt. 
Uh, but them little things like that, when he was a little kid, you could fall bound, bounce right back up before anybody knew. But yeah, if you got the seven-year-olds around, don't underestimate them. And uh, yeah, them good deeds, they, uh, they did you pretty, pretty bad sometimes. I got more to tell about my uh, unintentional good deeds. Yeah, exactly where they went. There was a bunch of problems from it, trying to do nice things. Okay, that's enough for today. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.